So I know we've said this before, but I promise you, this week is shaping up to be the biggest one yet for the 2024 presidential race. Here's why. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday, when voters in 16 states will cast their ballots. And while he won't secure the total number of delegates needed tomorrow, the night will likely end with Donald Trump taking an insurmountable lead in the nomination process. Then on Thursday, President Joe Biden gives perhaps his biggest speech of the year in the State of the Union, aside from maybe the convention speech. So this really feels like the kickoff of the general election when voters will begin to decide between Joe Biden and Donald Trump for president. And at this moment, there are some warning signs for the Biden re-election campaign. There have been recent national polls which have Donald Trump leading, four of them, a couple of numbers deeper down that are more problematic. That's all a challenge for the president and his team, no doubt about it. But polls, let's remember, are just a snapshot in time. They're about the moment and a bet on what the electorate will look like. They're worthy of our attention in that respect, but not all of our attention. Because by solely fretting over the polls, we can lose sight of the bigger picture. And that is what is at stake in November. And the contrast between the two candidates voters will have to choose between, that's what it's about. That contrast is stark. On one hand, voters think Joe Biden is old. No argument there. The man is 81. But for those sweating Biden's age and whether he is up to the job, I've got a question for you. What do you think about all this? Did you just see Maduro, Venezuela, it's uh, unbelievable. Oil exploration and production in the United States. The Biden border will, well, you know this, right? We will expel the wall mongers. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be doing. Oh. I don't even know what that last one said. I mean, you'd rather that guy have access to the nuclear codes? Okay, maybe you're upset about what's happening at the southern border. Absolutely fair. Our country's immigration system is in desperate need of repair. Many aspects of it. Something needs to be done. And something would have been done, by the way, had it not been for Donald Trump. When Joe Biden tried to pass a border security package negotiated, by the way, by one of the most conservative Republicans in the Senate, Donald Trump tanked it. He's not the solution. He's kind of the problem. And he killed that bill, not over policy differences, but so he could continue to campaign on an anti-immigrant fear. Uh, promising sprawling detaining, detainment camps and echoing the language of Adolf Hitler. Our country is being poisoned. We're really being poisoned. And I will not let him turn the USA into a crime-filled, disease-ridden dumping ground. You know, people, people with terrible, terrible disease that is easily caught, I have to say, they're pouring into our country. And it's all racism and fear-mongering, all of it. And some money for an effective wall on the side, too, of course. That's it. No real solutions. Okay. Maybe you're upset about Joe Biden's handling of Israel's war in Gaza. I get it. There is no question that more needs to be done to put an end to the humanitarian crisis. More aid, it needs to end. But would you prefer the guy who instituted a Muslim ban? Would you prefer the guy who basically gives Netanyahu completely free reign and otherwise has said next to nothing about this crisis? Seriously, this is about as much as he said. So you have a war that's going on and you're probably going to have to let this play out. You're probably going to have to let it play out because a lot of people are dying. It should have never started. Is that the kind of strategic thinking you're looking for? You're looking for in the Oval Office, in the Situation Room? Okay. Maybe it's the economy you're most concerned about on lots of people's minds. That's understandable. The economy is curr currently has a 3.7% unemployment rate, 3.1% inflation, with a stock market near record highs. I'm asking this sincerely. Can you articulate one thing, just one, that Donald Trump has done or would do to make the economy better or your life better? Okay, while I'm waiting, let's talk about concerns about corruption that you might be basing your choice on. We've heard a lot about corruption. Despite relentless accusations from Donald Trump and Republicans in Congress, they have come up with nothing, zero, to pin on Joe Biden. It is a fever dream. It's meant to muddy the waters and distract from Donald Trump's four criminal indictments, the half a billion dollars he owes for business fraud and sexual assault, and the coup we all watched him attempt in real time. So is this batch of national polls good for Joe Biden? It is not, not at all. But at this point in the race, I'm not letting them take all of my attention, and neither should Democrats. Joe Biden and Democrats should not be on their heels right now. They can and should play offense on every single issue I just mentioned. 
not to mention other important issues like reproductive rights and climate change. The policy is on their side. The politics is on their side. And the facts are on their side.